And the Bible says in the first verse, the second chapter of the book of Acts, we're just sort of walking through the book of Acts. And, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now, I mentioned the other night, and just to recap, uh, Luke is, 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 is writing this letter, and, and, and he's already targeted Theophilus because he, he wanted him to be understanding that I, more than anything, I, I want to I throw this out there. I don't believe that the, the book of Acts, I don't believe it was ever, when it was written, um, Luke wasn't intending for it to be a book of doctrine. It, it was, even though we use it for doctrine, and there's nothing wrong with that, but, but rather Luke was, was trying to just do a general overview of what it was like uh, to, to, to live out the life of a follower of Jesus Christ. This was just their everyday everyday walk this is just what they did this is just who they were now today we have to use it as doctrine because there's so many uh, religions and there's or there's so many uh, uh, baptisms and there's so many this and there's so many that but but it never was confusing like that in the beginning this they were just walking out what God had put in their heart to do and and the, so this and that's why oftentimes, saints, that's why there's not a lot of clarity on certain things. Because the clarity wasn't needed then. Because it was just their life. This is how they operated. Are you with me so far? But so, again, now I want you to notice something. He says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and you may ask yourself, because I want to ask you, does anybody in here keep the Feast of Weeks? Nobody does. Does anybody, you know, keep the Passover? Nobody does. Now let me ask you something. Do you think these things are, are over? Because I don't. And the reason why I don't is because, look, again, this ain't about doctrine. Luke said, look, it was, the, it was on the day of Pentecost, Theophilus. And this is what was taking place. And guess what, Theophilus? The Lord is one told him to stay here and tarry. Till he come back. He's the one commanding them to do it. So now, you can say, well, brother, that was part of the law. And I would say, you're wrong. He had nothing to do with the law. Okay, you with me? So now, let's look and see what the day of Pentecost was. What it actually was. It, 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 basically, this, this, the, the day of Pentecost was the 50th day of the Feast of Weeks. Okay, now I want you to watch something because to me this is good and I'm going to try my best not to get too excited because I want to get excited about this. Uh, how, how many of you, what's the first time in the Bible that you can recollect, when's the first time you heard the word Passover? Anybody? Moses? All right, that's good because that's, that's where we're going to start at. All right? all right, so all right. now look, think about this. The children of Israel has been in Egypt for 400 plus years. They've been in bondage. They didn't start out in bondage, but they've ended up in bondage. They're enslaved. They're in need of a Savior. Wouldn't you agree? Amen. And so, um, Sister Sherry, after so many hundred years, the Lord provides them a Savior. It isn't in the person of Jesus, but it is in the person of Moses. Right? And so the Bible says, keep from getting all into the weeds. The Bible says Moses goes to Pharaoh and he says, Look, you got to let his people, my people go. Right? And the Bible says that, that Pharaoh resisted and then he turned them loose. Then he resisted. You know the story. But one of the plagues was the death angel. You remember that? All right, so one of the plagues was the death angel. And so the Lord told Moses, obviously, what was going to happen. And he said, I'm going to tell you what to do. He says, you go and you get you a fatted lamb, all right, and you slay this lamb and you take the blood and you put the blood above the doorpost of every house. Is that correct? And he says, and what happens when this death angel, now this is important, 
when the death angel comes through the community, then whichever house has the blood over the door, he's going to pass over. Are you with me? So this was the Passover, correct? And so what the, the pass, when the Passover ended, then the Feast of Weeks began. And basically the Feast of Weeks was, was the very first day that the sickle hit the corn or the grain in order to start harvesting. Then it was seven weeks from that moment right up to the day of what we call the day of Pentecost. During this 50 days, during this 50 days, uh, and, and the reason I'm giving you this little bit of history lesson is because you notice, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, so uh, Israel, every Jewish man, every male Jewish man was at Jerusalem this day. It was, it was law, it was covenant, it was order. It's, it's just what they did. There wasn't no businesses open. There wasn't no shops open that was run by Jewish men. They were shut down and, and they were at this place at this time. And it's amazing because the Bible says, watch. The Bible says after Jesus resurrected that he was seen of people for how many days? Was it 40 days? Is that right? Watch close now. This is 50 days. All right, and so they tarried in Jerusalem for how many days? Ten days. Are you with me? Ten plus forty is how many? All right. So we got the se seven weeks, right? Or excuse me, the yeah, the seven weeks and and the fifty days, excuse me, and we have the fifty days right now at when the Pentecost has fully come. This went all the way back, as sister said, to Moses, the Passover and the and the, uh, the, the, the weeks of feast, and here we are in this, in this biblical reference, the day of Pentecost has fully come. Jesus was stayed around and, and, and witnessed to everyone for 40 days, and then he said, Terry, here in Jerusalem until I return, and that was a, a 10 days before the day of Pentecost, so 50 days has come and gone now, but the day of Pentecost is fully come. All right. So now, watch this. Now, to me, this, this here is going to start talking to you. Do you know what was given after Moses and the children of Israel, after they came out of Egypt, after the Passover, the Feast of Weeks began? Do you know what was given to Moses 50 days after the exit? The commandments. Are you with me? Now, again, 50 days is Pentecost, all right? So here we are in Scripture. The day of Pentecost has fully come, and we hear a sound like a mighty rushing wind. Now, you may say to yourself, Luke's saying this because the reason why Luke's going ahead and saying, look, it was the day of Pentecost. It had fully come. We was in one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. Now think about this. It's amazing that he says a sound as a mighty rushing wind because if, if you uh, paid attention in any, uh, to Ezekiel and the Lord told Ezekiel, he said prophesy to the wind, Ezekiel. Uh, the wind always had a representation of the Holy Spirit. And, and the Bible says that the, 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 the Spirit, the, and he said prophesy to the wind now, but the Bible says that the Lord, the Spirit began to accumulate the bones in this big old graveyard. Are you with me, saints? And, 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 and this is tying in perfectly because when you look at the text of Ezekiel, what you'll find is it wasn't an actual graveyard of bones, but rather it was Israel, the, the, the people of Israel in their dead stupor, spiritually speaking, and it was God's anointing, God's spirit, God's Holy Ghost that was resurrecting this body of people that had been dead by religion. I mean, he's with me today. Think about it. And so here it is. So many things is tying in and, and showing that here it was. The Jewish people was all in this Israel. 
the Israel of God, okay, not all of the Jews, but the Israel of God was in this place and there was all in one mind and one accord and on the, the day of Pentecost and instead of God giving uh, Israel or, or yeah, Israel the, the tablets or the commandments again, the, the commandments had taken an entirely different form, hadn't it? Because you could take the Bible away from somebody. You could destroy the tablets. Everybody could uh, forget about the written text, but, but what God was breathing down on them and what God has breathed down on us is the Word made flesh. Ain't that right? So, see, it was, it all, now think about this. In the beginning was the Word. So, in the beginning, the first Passover and the first Pentecost, the tablet was given, which was Word, right? And then, ladies and gentlemen, the second time we see the Word was when Jesus was born. The Word became flesh. Are you with me? But then, when the the, at like, in the like manner that you see Jesus ascend, he shall also descend. So then the third time that we see the word becoming flesh is when the word was heard like a sound of a mighty rushing wind and it entered the hearts of the people, you and I, the day of Pentecost, and then the word became flesh again for the Bible says we're written epistles, read and known of all. How many is with me today, saints of God? So there's a reason why there's a reason why that Luke was like, hey, we, is it the day of Pentecost? You know, we'd done been through the, the Feast of Weeks. It was the last day, the final day. We all been tarrying here because that's what the Lord said do. And we know crazy things happens on this day because obviously what happened when Moses come off of that mountain with those tablets that had the commandments on it, that the angels inscribed. That's pretty important, don't you think? So on this same day, at this same hour, there's another Pentecostal experience taking place. But this time, not much unlike the birth of Christ, the Holy Ghost has taken His abode in you and I, the heart of the believer. How many believes that today? Think about it. And suddenly there came a sound a sound, a sound from heaven. Ezekiel was told the prophesy to the wind. In John, the third chapter, Jesus said, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound, but can't tell where it comes from. Jesus was also referring to the Spirit. Ain't that right? Nicodemus, you must be born of the Spirit. And so it was a type, if you will. It was always a type that, the, that the, the wind was the Spirit of God. The rushing mighty wind was a type of the Spirit. Tongues of fire, it was a type of the cleansing or the purifying of the Holy Ghost. What it does to you and I, the believer. Also, ladies and gentlemen, what you have to consider is this. Never had there been a time that they had seen a corpor corporal infilling of God's anointing. And so this was totally different, Brother TJ. People had gotten anointed. People had had, had, had had feelings on the outside. There was an authority that had been presented to them on the outside. But, but never before had they seen a corporate union of God dwelling inside. Where it used to clean up the outside, he says now it's purifying from the inside. He says that everything outside and inside may be holy before God. I don't know about you, but that's pretty important, amen? And he says, and, and there appeared cloven tongues of fire and set upon them. And the Bible says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now that's an, that's an important thing there, that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Again, Lucas, Lucas he, he's, 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 he's writing this testimony of things that has took place took Took, <laughs> I can't even say the word, taken place in the last seven or eight or ten years. And these are the first couple months, if you will, of what he has witnessed with his own eyes to the Theophilus. And he's saying, look, he said, everybody up there was filled. Everybody say filled, because that's important. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. They, they, when you filled, you filled. There's nowhere else to go, is there? 
So all of God was inside these people. As much as they could contain was inside these people. Boy, that's up, man. And so they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And this is the, the fourth verse. And, and began, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then he goes in, they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Drew, Jews, devout men of every nation under heaven. Now watch. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because every man heard them speak in his own language. Ain't that something? So now he says, look, there was devout Jews from every nation. All right? Now, if we said that today, if we said every nation, then that would, then we consider China a nation, Russia a nation, Germany a nation, right? And so they would be devout Christians from every nation, right? And so when, when the Holy Ghost fell upon them, because you got to understand something. Today, uh, the, the day of Pentecost to us today, it's, it's the birthday for the church. I'm talking about the church that we're living in right now. It's the birthday. It's when, it's when we seen that the birth of the church come alive. Ever, we'd been hidden and we'd been in secret, if you will, but now all of a sudden it's noised abroad. There's something shaking. How many is with me today? So there's people from every nation under the sun there, every believer from under the sun and when this man stands up and he begins speaking, see, at this moment, he's not talking about the gift of tongues. There is a gift of tongues. But this isn't what he's referring to at the moment. He's saying one man might have jumped up or it could have been a, a lady jumped up and she began to testify of the goodness of the Messiah and every nation under her voice heard her in their language. How many is with me today, saints? Woo, my, my, my. That's something, ain't it? You ever spoken Chinese before? You may get your chance. You can't. I mean, how many's with me? You may get your chance to speak in German or Russian. Because when, when the Lord begins to birth something brand new, in which that's what God's doing now, He's birthing something brand new. And, and when He begins to birth something brand new, then he's gotta, it's got to make such an impact that people talk about it. See, it was noised abroad because they said, we're confounded. We're, our mind's blown. How did every person under this roof understand what Brother Peter was telling us? There's, there's no way. He can't speak ten languages. He can't, he can't do it. But it's the authority of the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes in you, you're not the same person you were. It's the power of God inside the people. Now think about it, ladies and gentlemen. When, when, that, when that Ten Commandments was given to Moses, was it for everybody or just somebody? For instance, ladies and gentlemen, is the Ten Commandments today, is it for everybody or is it just for Israel? Are you with me? Whosoever will let them come. Is that right? Now look, the, 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 that, that tablet was the type of God. That's what we governed ourselves by, correct? Jesus was God, right? The Word became flesh. When that Word come into us, ladies and gentlemen, you better believe something. You have an authority and you have a power to speak to Word to every living person on the planet Earth because God has given you the Word. Amen. So he says, look, they're, they're confounded. They're blown away. And Luke is telling this. And could you imagine being the first reader of this after Luke has penned it? And Theophilus maybe is the one reading it the very first time. And he's like, you got to be kidding me. Was this really real? And when they was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? They were like, I know these people. I was raised with these folk. Are you with me? I was raised with these folk. And, and they, can't, they ain't been to college. They ain't been to university. They didn't listen to that disc that teach you how to speak in Spanish. They ain't done none of that. These are Galileans. We could say these are Walton County Monroe guys. These are Monroe girls. How in the world do they talk like this? How, how in the world? My mind's going, ladies and gentlemen, you know what? We don't believe. We don't believe enough. We got to get stirred up. 
We got it. Some of y'all so dead, I can smell y'all. We got to get stirred up. This is the Holy Ghost. This is God. This is the power of life. This is everything that God is. What He can speak any language. He can work out any mathematical equation. He can talk to any this or that. He is God. And it lives in you. Oh, my, my, my. Anyways, I believe it. I hope you do. So they, they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we ever man in our own tongue wherein we were born? And then he now I'm, I'm going to butcher some of these Perithians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in the Mesopotamia and in Judea and, and all Asia and you just keep going down Creeds and Arabians do you hear them speak in our own tongues watch this the wonderful works of God you know what ladies and gentlemen they this is what happened the power of God fell on these people they had been waiting for ten days. They hadn't had their mind on work. They hadn't had their mind on business. They've been, for the last 50 days, they have been celebrating the Feast of Weeks, the Passover. I'm going to tell you something. I want you to consider something real quick. Can you imagine for one moment what kind of revelation these people were operating in at this moment in time because they actually knew with every fiber of their being that Jesus was the actual Passover lamb. Are you with me? Now they knew. They had a type of it before, and it was like, wow, look at the blood that was over that doorpost that the death angel didn't even come to all my cousins. The death angel didn't come to my nephews and my aunts and my uncles. Boy, that was some powerful blood, wasn't it? And then here they are, ladies and gentlemen, and guess what? Uh, uh, the Passover, the lamb was offered up. I mean, he's with me. His name was Jesus, right? But you know what? Just as, as Paul said in Hebrews, he said, "Faith uh, now faith, substance thing, hope for the evidence of things not seen. He said, it ain't, we don't have no, Paul said there was a moment we didn't have 100% proof that Jesus was God. We were speculating. We was hoping. They were desiring, whatever the case was. But look, when he resurrected, and said, Terry here for 10 days until I come back. I'm coming back. He said, the proof is there. Now we have the substance of things hoped for. We have the evidence of things never seen before. This Passover lamb brought it to itself to fruition for you and I. Ladies and gentlemen, we should be happy about that. Think about it. So now look, they're sitting there and they're testifying. Because look, Peter doesn't got a hold of this. I believe you're God. That's basically what Peter told Jesus, isn't it? All right? You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Is that right? Peter done got a revelation. Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. The rock, not Peter. Don't name your church Peter. You better, your church better be named the revelation of Jesus Christ because that's what Peter was. He was talking about was the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so it didn't have nothing to do with Peter. Peter was just an old crazy fisherman that just a, a couple of days later was going to deny him three times. But what he had in his heart of hearts, and what he had deep down in his soul that was hidden that the devil could not abort was the revelation. He saw through somebody else's eyes, not Peter's eyes. He saw through the eyes of God. Flesh and blood had not revealed that to Peter. But the Father which was in heaven had made it real to Peter, either in a dream, in a vision, or however it was. He saw Jesus for who he was. And you can guarantee something. When Peter's sitting there after 10 days and he heard that wind coming in, he knew this is God all over again. <laughs> Think about it. I, I hear him coming. I hear him coming. Then when he saw that fire, I see him coming. Why? Because ladies and gentlemen, that fire typified in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit. Are you with me today? So you consider this. They're sitting there uh, the day of Pentecost. Fully, and every, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and there were some people just speaking in tongues. There were plenty just speaking in tongues. You ain't got no Bible says that's the evidence of the Holy Ghost. We don't only have, only have three accounts in the entire scripture that they actually spoke in tongues as evidence. And you notice what's interesting about that? And all three times they spoke in tongues in front of other Jews. 
It was as if it was a witness to them alone. Because how many other people got filled with the Holy Ghost and they never mentioned tongues? As, Are you with me today? Now, will a Holy Ghost person speak in tongues? Eventually, a Holy Ghost person will speak in tongues. Amen. You're going to speak in tongues. It's going to hit you one day and you're going to go bonkers. And you know what? Everybody's going to look at you like you're crazy. That's right. Like you done, you done flipped the script. But guess what? It's just the power of God. You don't know where it comes from. It just bubbles up inside of you. And you're like, all I know is I got something to say that my language won't cover. So I'm going to let God take over my tongue and I'm going to let him talk a minute. And how many knows he talks sometimes? He talks loud sometimes. He gets boisterous sometimes. It's the gift of God. It's not the evidence that you're saved for the Bible says if you speak in tongues as much as angels and have not charity, what profit it? It ain't you. You can speak in tongues like a canary. But if you ain't been filled with the power of God and have the charity and love of God, you're none of his. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so think about it. They, they, there's some people in there stammering tongues. They're shaking under the power of the Holy Ghost. And Peter, Peter starts talking. He says, surely, saints, surely people, listen to me and listen to me good. He ain't the only one preaching, by the way. There's others that's talking too. They says, my God, do y'all realize what has taken place? The Passover lamb, we, we washed his feet. He washed our feet. The Passover lamb, we eat with him. The Passover lamb, what do you mean, Peter? Does, it, does this mean death will pass us over? And Peter's like, yes, what it means is we've been given eternal life. What it means, we can never die. Are you with me today? Say, it means the death angel has no sting. There's no grip on death. There's no integrity in what the devil said. The devil has lost. He chuckled in the garden, but today he's embarrassed because our Savior defied the grave, defied death, defied reality, and resurrected forevermore, and we received his power. Think about it. Oh, the devil had laughed for... 1,000, 1,500 years. Oh, we tricked them, didn't we? Are you with me? He thought he had tricked them. He thought he had won. He just won the fight. He didn't win the battle. Is that right? So he'd been laughing and mocking, carrying on for 1,500 years, right up until Calvary, and lo and behold, Think about how, now I want you to consider something, saints. When Jesus was born, this, the, the world, all the, the devil went slap crazy. The devil got into Herod. How many is with me? This man was so senile, he killed his own wife, killed his brother. This guy was absolutely mentally handicapped. He had a devil on him bigger in Texas. And when, that, when, that, when, that, when, the, when the realities and the prophetic words begin to vibrate over the surrounding community of Nazareth and, and Jerusalem and Galilee and they begin to realize and this joker went on a murdering spree killing hundreds and thousands of little boys trying to get the king. Are you with me? Because, hey, ladies and gentlemen, if the king was to die, then Satan would still rule and reign. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Satan's on a really, really small leash. He ain't really got no authority in him. His teeth's been pulled. He's snaggled to. He's lying to you because our king resurrected and lives forevermore and now lives inside of us. The Passover lamb was my lamb, was your lamb. Forever I'm healed, sanctified and filled with his anointing. Think about it. The devil thought, you could imagine some of the messages Peter and James, some of them boys would have been preaching. They was like, my God, man, we, this is what granddaddy told us about. That's some of the things they'd have been saying. This is what uncle said. Joel, you remember when Joel said such and such? You know, you could imagine the conversation they was having in the upper room when they heard ladies trembling under the Holy Ghost, men weeping, because everybody experiences the presence of the Lord differently. And weeping, ladies weeping, stammering tongues, people giving testimonies of limbs growing out right there in that moment. Oh, somebody said, I don't know about that. I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when it really comes to fruition who God is and God really, really vindicates himself in your heart, I'm here to tell you he can heal every disease in your body. If you're born without an eye, he can put it back in. How do you know this, Brother McKinney? Because ladies and gentlemen, in the process,
process of that 50 days from the Passover to Pentecost when Moses was leading them out of Egypt. The Bible says there wasn't a feeble one among them. There wasn't a one of them on crutches. There wasn't a, ah, there wasn't a one of them on a walker. There wasn't a one of them on life support. When you get into the reality of the Feast of Weeks and who God is, he'll heal you. He'll change you. He'll give you everlasting life forever. He's a healer. Think about it. You mean to tell me out of a million people there wasn't a one of them born without a limb? There wasn't a one of them blind? There wasn't one of them deaf? But not a feeble one among them when they left? You know why? When the Passover lamb, when that blood's applied, you're healed. Oh, this church don't believe. I don't know what's happened. I've failed y'all. God, we got to get in this book. It's all in there. Yeah, they was feeble people. There was people on life support. There was people on their last leg. There was people born without limbs. There was people who had amputations. But they didn't leave there that way. It's the same way today. If we get a hold of the covenant of God, there is no sickness nor disease that can hold this body down. Not a one. Think about it. Think about it. Consider it. He says this is unbelievable. Peter said everything Joel talked about for he should pull his, pour his spirit out on all flesh. Don't think for a minute this was the finality of it. This was just the beginning of it. Right? This was not the finality. This was just, this was just a taste. Anybody know how many people was filled with the Holy Ghost within the first couple of days? How many was added to the church? 3,000? Do anybody know how many was in the upper room? How many? 110, 120? Right? Think about that. Now look. Started with a small crowd. Ended up with a big crowd. You know all it took was the Holy Ghost falling. You know what it all it'll take this tonight? Is you to just let the Holy Ghost come down. Some of you just shake junk off before you come in here. Get rid of yourself. And come in here and say, you know what? I don't feel like it. But I'm going to have a move of God. How I many is with me? I mean, I'm going to reach him. I'm going to get a hold of him. Right? Because, ladies and gentlemen, if he'd done it before, he'll do it again. I don't know why we think it's a one. Well, it'll come around another thousand years. Ladies and gentlemen, you're a move of God. You know why the disciples didn't mention nothing about revival? Because they were the revival. There's no reason to talk about it. Wherever they went, that's who they were. That's what was in them. That's what was living. That's what was breathing. You know, they know who they were. We need to get the reality that we've had our Pentecost. How many has been filled with the Holy Ghost? You've had your Pentecost, John. Well, you need to just start running and, and dancing and shouting because God's filled you. His fire's in you. It's cleansing you of all infirmities. You have the authority of the Lord living in you. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. You love the Lord. Amen. And so, he says, they was amazed, blown away. It's crazy. Can you imagine Luke writing this? His hand's trembling as he writes. He said, you never seen nothing like it. You're not even going to believe it. But it was everything, it was everything you can imagine. And I want you to pay close attention, he's saying, because, you know, the thing is, you, you, need, you need to know this is exactly what happened because this bears witness with exactly what Jesus said would happen. He said it's just a further vindication of everything that the Messiah told us. For the Messiah said he would pour his spirit upon all flesh. He says, and they would prophesy and they would speak with other tongues. That's Mark 6 or 7. Why? Jesus, that's Jesus speaking. Jesus himself was speaking. And he said, he's going to prophesy and they're going to speak with other tongues. He says, and, and the Holy Ghost is just going to saturate them. And everybody's like, oh, this is, must be what Joel's talking about. Oh, this is, this is mighty. And not knowing, ladies and gentlemen, four weeks, six weeks down the road. It's going to be happening to them. Oftentimes we put things off as if it's going to happen to another generation, you know. It's going to happen to so-and-so. It, it won't never happen here. But ladies and gentlemen, what, what if you're sitting on a prophecy right now? 
What if you're sitting on a word right now and you just and you won't get up out of your stupor? We're so drunk by religion that we don't think nothing's going to happen. But but something's going to happen. And you know why the charismatics is going to get their part of the cake? Because they believe anything can happen. They may be off in left field with their doctrine, and they are, in my opinion, but they believe in the supernatural. They believe God's for them, not against them. We've been preached to to such an extent, we don't think God's for us no more. I'm going to tell you, we're the only ones he is for. He's for those that hold true to his word. He's for those that hold true to his truth. He's for those that love the Holy Ghost and love his word. He's for us. He'll do it. He'll do it all over again. How many loves him? Cretes, Arabians, we heard them speak in our tongues, 11th verse. He said, we heard them speak about the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed, were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others was mocking, said, watch this, they're full of new wine. Isn't it something that they assumed they were drunk? People that tell you the Holy Ghost don't make a difference in you, they ain't never had the Holy Ghost. They ain't never tasted of it. it. It'll make a difference in you. It'll make you act different. It'll make you drunk. I've seen people drunk in the Holy Ghost. Stagger out of church and drive home and never get a ticket. Drunker. Are you with me? But, but it wasn't drunk on, on liquor. It was drunk on the vine. Are you with me? The true vine. Isn't it something that Jesus referred to as a vine and grapes come from vine and wine comes from vine? You know what? It'll make you drunk. It'll make you drunk in love with the Lord. Drunk for truth. Are you with me? It, it, it will make you all absolutely intoxicated with the, by the presence of the Lord. The real Holy Ghost will absolutely change you. Ain't no doubt about it. He says they, they, they was mocking. Oh, they new wine. They got that new wine. But Peter stood up with the 11. Boy, I want you to think about this. We mentioned this the other night in the end. David had already prophesied about, and this is something here to consider. David had already prophesied about Judas. He mentioned his bishopric. And how did it have to be given to another? And so Peter stands and he says, look. Judas went the way he went. And he says, so now we got to have the, the twelfth man, if you will. And they had two men they wanted to choose from, but without the Holy Ghost. Now, you, don't, you ain't going to find this again. You won't find the way they divvied this up again by casting lots. You won't find it. Ain't that right? And so, but at this moment, this is all they knew to do. And so they cast lots, and the lot fell on Mathis. So now Mathis took the place of Judas as the twelfth disciple. So Peter heard what they were saying. Oh, they drunk on that new wine. There was mocking them. And Peter, but watch this, and the eleven stood up. You, you hear me? You know what? They was backing up Peter. And Peter was backing up them. You know, wouldn't that be something if when, when one of us take a stand, we all take a stand? Because you notice in the first, they were all in one place and in one accord. Right? They had all things common. Right? And so when, 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 when Peter heard the, the rest of the family being rebuked, Peter was, we could just say he was sort of like the husband. He stood up. Whoa, stop. And the mother Levin just stood up with him. Don't, don't think for one minute these are a bunch of pacifists. Are you with me? Anybody know what a pacifist is? There wasn't a bunch of pacifists. I mean, this same person that's about to preach this sermon that's going to shake people and prick them in their hearts, he recently cut a man's ear off. Are you with me? So the Bible says he stood up and the 11 stood with him. You know, they were saying, we're still in one accord. Church, I'm going to tell you something. If, if, if you'll really get behind your sister and you'll really get behind your brother and you'll just stand, you just stand with them. When they stand up, you stand up with them. When they stand for something, you stand for it. When, 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 when they go on their knees, you go on their knees. You're going to see God shake some stuff. 
But until we get in one mind and one accord, you ain't going nowhere, and neither am I. How many is with me today, saints? All right. I ain't going to charge you a penny for that. How many believes it? Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. He said, you better surrender, surrender to my words. You know, isn't it amazing, ladies and gentlemen, that people don't even realize when they're in the midst of a move of God. You ever thought about that? I've seen it in this, in this church right here. There'll be an absolute, a, a moving of God's spirit. And people will be over here talking to the cell, over here t- t- tickling something. They'll be over here doing this and doing half asleep. And I'm thinking, can you, are you going to miss the coming of the Lord right in your presence? Are you going to miss the moving of the Lord right in your presence? How in the world can you sleep through a revolution? It's unbelievable, isn't it? You know what I'm talking about. These, these people were asleep. They were mocking it. It's been voiced all around. It's, going, it's circulating. It's on Facebook, Instagram. It's everywhere. These people were all speaking different languages. Anybody ever had a video to get out on social media and you, you're speaking in tongues or one of your friends speaking in tongues and then you see the people's replies under that? Anybody ever seen that? They'd be like, oh, what they do? Some crazy people. They're snake handlers. That's the kind of stuff you get, ain't it? They're crazy people. And you hear what they, they you know, I've had people tell me, ain't no need for all that. You know, always some. I said, you're right. There's no need for you to do it. It ain't going to help you none. You unbelieving devil. How many is with me? That's all they're doing. They, they, they're unbelievers, so guess what? They want to pull you down. So eventually you got to say, enough's enough, devil. I speak in tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gives me utter. So I'm supposed to just shut down the Spirit of the Lord? Man, I'd rather be in trouble with you than him. Amen. I answer to him, not to you. I can't help you don't understand it. Maybe your understanding needs to be enlightened a little bit. This same person believes in more than one gender. This same person believes in, are you with me? This same person believes homosexuality is all right. This same person that believes you shouldn't speak it. You know I'm telling you the truth. Most times there's a commonality. They're all just a bunch of carnal folk that do not believe the Bible. Praise the Lord anyways. Good preaching again. And he says, Ye men of Judea and all that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known to you and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as you suppose seeing is but the third hour of the day. That's saying a lot right there. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass. He's going ahead. Think about this, boy. He's going ahead and quoting Joel. It's going to come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons. Could you imagine who he's talking to now? But not only that, he's talking to them and he says, your sons are going to prophesy. You unbelieving reprobate. That's what he's saying. Your sons will prophesy, and your daughters. Whoa, that's something, ain't it? I mean, that's just Peter. We gotta, we gotta. That's exactly what he said. He's putting his his finger on them, and he says he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. You know what he was also saying? He said, "You felt the spirit too. You're just in rebellion to it." Are you with me today? He poured out his. That's what the Bible just said. All flesh. He was talking to a flesh person. He felt the spirit. He just didn't like it. See, some of you the same way. You get a little intimidated by it, or rather, you don't want your buddy to know, you know, or your, or your girlfriend to know, or whatever it is, peer pressure. And so, but let me tell you, when the Spirit falls on you, you either, you either obey it or you in rebellion of it. The Spirit shall fall on all flesh. You're all flesh in here, ain't you? Well, you felt the Spirit of God one time or another. And your sons... Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. He's talking to the man that's mocking them, saying, they, they just drunk. They got that new wine going on. And he says, you know what? You may not be one that prophesies. You may not be one that dreams, but you're going to feel the presence, and your progenitors is going to speak like canaries under the Holy Ghost, and they're going to prophesy your world out and God's world in. My God, I love it. Sheesh. And on my servants and my handmaid, I'm going to pour out. Now, Peter's preaching. 
He's still under the anointing. You know, he's, he's, you can feel that. You know, he's, he's got a vigor about him. He's like a locomotive. You ain't going to stop him now. I'm going to pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Ladies and gentlemen, there's some of you young men, some of you young ladies, y'all need to start prophesying. There's something stirring in you. You know that. I don't mean just get up and say any old crap. I mean as you spill, spill the Lord bubbling inside of you, you need to open your mouth and let that come out. Amen. I can hear it right now. Somebody go up. Sis, are you sure you know what you're saying? That's what they'll do. They'll be thinking they're doing the Lord of work. Are you sure you know what you're saying? I don't know. You said a heavy thing just then. I've had them do me like that. It's supposed to be seasoned ministers. Come up. Now, son, do you, do, you, do you? I'm thinking to myself, I wouldn't have said it if I know what I was saying. I mean, don't you think I realize the gravity of what's being said? Now, you, you know, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, you, you got to just, you, you got to, people, you got to get some tenacity about this, some boldness about you, and start speaking what you feel God giving you. Oh, well. I don't know. And all my servants, my handmaids, I'm going to pour out in those days of my spirit. All right, I'm going to bring it to a close. And they shall prophesy. And I'm going to show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood. Now watch. This has already happened. How many is with me? Just because, just because, well, you know, with the first part was about sons and daughters prophesying, then you believe this other part is supposed to come to fruition. The sun was turned to darkness when Jesus died. How many is with me? And the moon in the blood. The law was covered in blood. The moon represented the law. How many is with me? All right. And he said, and, and, and the great notable day of the Lord come. I'm going to tell you, he was here. How much more do you want him to come? He was here. Oh. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How many knows what his name is? Is his name is Jesus? Come on, somebody, let me hear you say it. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand clap. All right. We're going to end right there. You see what verse we're on 21. Anybody got any questions? And Brother John's got a mic, so today we want to hear your questions if you have a question. Now, I told you all to study up and have some questions, so somebody needs to have a question. Because I know you all do homework. You teachers, you better have a question. You all tell you all's children to have homework. You better do their homework. If you don't do you all's homework, that's like a double standard, ain't it? That's what I think anyway. Somebody got a question. Yes, ma'am. Hey, microphone. There you go. John's Johnny on the spot. What would you say is the probably biggest thing that keeps a child of God filled with the Holy Ghost from being sensitive enough to really give the utterance that God wants them to speak? Um, what I've seen in my experience Holy Ghost filled people, people that I believe is absolutely Holy Ghost filled. Uh, there's such a a bondage, and I don't believe it's I don't believe it's purposefully. I believe it was unintentional. But we're all a product of our teacher. But the leadership has such a harness on people that they they muzzle God. I've seen it in my life. I've seen it, and when 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 you have more of a of a dictatorship behind the pulpit. And they muzzle, they, you're, you're, you're stifled, you're, you're almost, or a judgmental spirit. You know, I've had, I've been under both myself. And where you had to watch every little thing you said to be sure it wasn't said out of place or out of this or out of that. Anybody else ever experienced stuff like that? And they're judging every word you say. They're judging everything that you say. And maybe you're not, you know, maybe you don't know the Bible verse, but you feel something in you saying, thus saith the Lord about such and such. Then all those kind of things. I believe there has to be, I believe there has to be way, 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 way more liberty. I believe in order because the Bible's in order. God's got order. But at the same time, you got to, you eventually, sometimes you got to just throw the children out of the nest and let them fly. And sometimes you have to swoop down and pick them up. I mean, knows how that's how eagles do and other birds. Swoop down and grab them. But sometimes, says Sherry, you got to just let them go. And some of us need to just turn loose. And, and I, you know, I believe in my experience, it's been 
you know, I'm the only, this kind of mentality, I'm the man of God here. I'm the only one who hears from the Lord. And I believe that's nonsense. I mean, he's with me. I believe we're the body of Christ. Amen. I'm, a, I'm, I'm at the helm today, but tomorrow it could be someone else. And uh, it's, it's, to me, it's, it's the only, the big I about it is the fact that I'm responsible, but that's it. And, and in reality, it's, in that, in that case, it would be, it would almost, it almost be like a hangsman's noose for me. But that it don't make me bigger than anybody else. Amen. It just is what it is. I've got my call. You've got your call. So what I would say is don't let no one muzzle that spirit. You're an individual servant of God. He is. Keep reminding yourself. He's my father. He's my father. If the whole world was to vanish. He's still my father. So he talks to me. And I talk to him. And I tell everybody what we talk about sometimes. And it's good stuff. You know what I mean? Keep an personal individual relationship with the Lord is that all right all right if that don't work google it I'm just kidding (laughs) get the wrong answer every time someone else yes sir brother David come on brother how does the moon turn into blood huh oh well that's good all right, well, in, in Scripture, the, man, the moon was a, it was a typology of, of the law because it was a lesser light, a reflection. You got me? So it wasn't the sun. It's a reflection, correct? The law was a reflection of the sun. The sun was Jesus. Are you with me? All right, so as you remember in Revelation, the 12th chapter, His feet was upon the moon. He was standing on the law and the prophets. Remember that? So it was was typology. So the moon didn't actually turn blood red, even though there is a harvest moon which turns red. Are you with me today? (laughs) Sheesh. All right. Who else? Yes, sir. Hold on. Let's get a microphone because I can't hear you, Snaggle. How, How did Moses get the direction from God to do what he did? How did Moses get direction from God to do what he did? did. Okay, well, number one, he saw a burning bush that was never consumed. Is that correct? And the bush spoke to him. And what the Bible says, kick off your feet, choose Moses, for you are on holy ground. He He had a relationship with the Lord so strong, so significant, such in his season. Let's put it that way. That the Lord spoke to him from a burning bush. Now this, again, the bush wasn't consumed. And I, I believe we, we sort of missed this. The, it had nothing to do with the bush. It was the fire. Because that, that same fire led them out of Egypt as well. See, we say the burning bush, but the bush wasn't consumed. So it wasn't the bush, it was the fire. Because the fire, the fire that you received will not destroy you. It will make you better. It will heal you. It will give you eternal life, right? It ain't the bush. It's the fire. And so the fire led them out of Israel at night, out of Egypt at night, and the cloud by day. And the fire of the Holy Ghost in cloven tongues. Are you with me? And so that was the time. But anyways, he had a, a intimate personal relationship with God. As a matter of fact, the scripture says after the exodus that the Lord talked to him face to face. That's what the Bible says. Um, his, uh, his cousin, Aaron and uh, Miriam, they was upset because they felt like they were a prophet like Moses. We're prophets too. And the Lord, number one, he s- s- slaps one of them with leprosy. And the Lord says, if there is a prophet among you, if, that's a big word when the Lord's talking to you, If you're a person, you know, if there's a prophet among you, I'll speak to him in dreams or visions. So this is how I'm going to deal with you if there is a prophet among you. But Moses, not so. For I speak to Moses face to face. He's my friend. So I don't know how all Moses and the Lord talked, but I know they talked face to face. And I know they talked. 
to the fire, which was a representation of God. The fire was God, just like the cloud was God. You can't get away from that. That was God. That was the representation of God. And, um, but we know this. He had a relationship with that rod. Moses was absolutely drawn out by God. He was just a man of God. More than a prophet, he was a priest. Someone else? Let's wait for Slowpoke to get over here. He's running 100 mile an hour. Yes, sir. Now, um, with, with Moses being drawn out by God, and David as well, and all your other priests and prophets that you, you read about, what about your average everyday person that, you know, you've never heard their name in the Bible, but they were a believer in God? How, how exactly do, would you think that God had spoke to them? Because everyone has a significance in the body of Christ. So how do you think, or how, how do you figure that God spoke to them the same okay. way, or what? All right, well, number one, you, the sons of God, sons of God, can't even measure themselves with sons of men. Are you with me? All right, now watch. Moses... David, Elijah, Elisha, name anybody you want to. John the Baptist. And the, Jesus said himself of John the Baptist, a uh, man born of woman, there's no greater prophet than John ever born. But he's the very least. The very least in the kingdom is greater than John. Now that's still, isn't it? Now John is the greatest prophet ever born of woman. But the least in the kingdom is greater than that greatest prophet ever born of woman. Now, you're born of the kingdom if you're born again. Are you with me? So now, where they needed a sign, you don't need a sign. Are you with me? Now, for instance, use what you got in your hand, Moses. I wish we had that luxury. But we don't. But we don't need it. Because the word of faith has come unto us. And we speak to those things that be not as though they were. See, this is really the part that's missing. It isn't that we ain't got it. We've got it. We just don't do it. We got to start exercising. That's why I, you hear me harp on it. And I know I feel some of you spirit. You don't, you, you're tired of hearing it. But I harp on sonship. I harp on walking. What is the Holy Ghost for? Is it just to give you a pass out of hell? Y'all tired of hearing that, ain't you? But, but I'm still wanting to shake you. If, you. if all you want to do is miss hell, get saved and go home. Stay there. Stay good. Stay sober. You know, don't beat your wife up. Don't beat your husband up. Pray every night. My God, ask God to kill you and take you home. Because you've missed it. It's the seal until the day of redemption. You're sealed. But that ain't what it's for at all. That is a portion. But it's the authority of God. What does he give you that for? Just for you to wrap it on the vine until you get wrapping up somebody to pluck you? My point is this. You're greater. You, you, what you have in you, what God has invested in every blood-bought son of God is greater than all of them combined. It, it, uh, greater than Moses is here. Greater than John is here. Great, if you're born of the kingdom, now if you're not, don't argue with me about what I got. Because I got it, all right? I ain't, it ain't in fruition yet. I ain't manifesting it, but I know what's in here. And I'm just looking for the connections to get it going because one day I'll speak to those things that be not as though they were. Because God talks to me. He woke me up this morning and he said something to me. And I knew it just as good as I know my own name. God talks to me. He deals with me. He talks to you. He deals with you. Sometimes you don't even know he's doing it. But he's talking. He's moving. I don't need a rod. I don't need a tablet. I don't need this. I don't need that. All I need is the Spirit of God he's already given me. Are you with me? Man, greater than John is here. Someone else? <laughs> Brother Stephen. Boy, he's famous tonight. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, uh, to, to be, to have you... Humility is to remain teachable. That's my opinion. And Say that again. Thing, Say it again. To have humility, humility is, is to remain teachable. 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 
Yeah. Absolutely. And when, when God, when God, Jesus Christ, works through other people to me, I think God speaks to me through other people. God speaks to me through Brother David, through Pastor Jonathan. Yes, yes, yes. Through, through my wife, Denise. I may not always listen to them, but better advice than one of my own is. Especially your wife, huh? Exactly. <laughs> That's a I smart that, man got, right there, Jack. The women have been leading us wrong for a long time. I got that part right. But anyway... Uh, I, th I think it's important for me to understand that and to, and to remain teachable and let that come into my heart and soul. And also, I believe God works through me. God is in you and God is in me. I have to seek that out through the, through the Holy Spirit right. to get that. Right. You know, that, that's, that's a good point. Humility, you can't be taught unless you're, you have humility. I mean, there's really some of us, we need to be humbled because it's, it's hard to teach you anything. And, and, and what it is, is all, you're comparing everything that I say with what you've been taught. And, and the thing about it is you didn't study it. You were just taught that. So you could have been taught a lie. I'm not saying you were. I'm saying you could have been. And so instead of debating it like that, just open yourselves up. There's something that's really, really interesting. They said about the, the, the consciousness of man. And I thought it was very intriguing. I read a, 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 I read a, a stat that said that they had... That proven that even the people that say they do not believe, I disbelieve, I don't believe in such and such, I don't believe in God. They said every person under the sun actually does believe. They just will not admit it. The Lord gave that at birth. You had, because there's no way in the world he could judge you. If he didn't have something in you that was relative to life. Ain't that something? So, you know, there's some things that I may teach that may be way off and left field for some of you. And, and that's fine. But uh, there's something inside of you that says, mm, it's probably right. Then it's okay. Somebody else? You need to turn your mic on, sis. I don't know how to work technical stuff. I've Anyways, noticed. I was just going to say, if God wants to teach you something, he'll humble you. Amen. He'll put you where you need to be. Amen to that. How many has been humble before? Humble pie. Anybody ever eat any humble pie? <laughs> I've eat it through snaggle teeth. Lord, I had to kick my teeth out to eat some of it. Go ahead. How do you know if, like, God's talking to you and not, like, through people, but to you. Okay. Um, well, I, I'm going to say I'm not for sure. How old are you? Eight? Nine. How do you know? Are you interested in her or something? You know? Y'all slip one of the letters and stuff like that? Do y'all write? You do. <laughs> slipped right up on him. Do you see that? All right, so this is what I'll say. The, the way I hear from the Lord and the way I know if I hear from the Lord, I am guarantee it differs from a person at nine years old. Um, I, but the way I hear from the Lord, if I know it's the Lord or not, is I, I filter everything that I hear through this. I, this is my filter. So, nope, that don't work right. That ain't. That was Jody talking to me. That wasn't the Lord. You know what I'm saying? All them bad things she says about me. I'm like, well, no, I'm filtering that. Lord said nothing but good stuff about me. So I filter everything. This is my filter. So when you're nine years old then I would have to say that I'm going to say if a person at nine years old feels like the Lord's speaking to them, he probably is. I'm going to say he probably is. It's a good possibility. Because you're not at the age yet, you done got all tainted and messed up, or at least you shouldn't have. If you have, your parents bundled the job. But you should be at that age where you can really hear from the Lord. Right? Amen. Any parents are bundled a job besides me? Y'all don't act surprised at that. Every one of y'all did it. 
God's good. Someone else? Yes, ma'am. I do realize if we're going to really do anything for God, there absolutely has to be a, a humility. Otherwise, we're going to shy away from it real quick because you'll be mocked and persecuted and all those things. Besides making sure to not walk in the carnal mind and be sure to walk in the spirit, do you have any further advice on how to really be in that place? Walk in the spirit you're referring to? Yeah. Well, besides, outside of the, well, of course, you have to have humility. And you got to be in that spiritual mind. You can't be yeah. using your carnal mind at all yes. for you to be sensitive to what God has for us to say. Yes. And yes. And do. Do you have any further? Well, yeah, you, you consider something like this. Um, it, it's, it's amazing that the Adam and Eve was given a commandment. I said, don't eat. Of all the trees you can freely eat, but the tree in the midst of the garden, you can't. And guess what? It's To us, it sounds very simple, but it wasn't that simple. You know? And the you could see the progression because the serpent began to speak to her. And before long, she was pliable to the point. That he could slip her a lie and she receive it. And so it's, it's subtle. It's, everything is so subtle. It's why we must pray without ceasing. It's why we must, we must as I said, filter everything from, through the word of the Lord. But we've really, saying this is something i got to hit on Sunday. Night. We have got to. It's a necessity. You better get a prayer life like a real one. Not one of these fake ones. You got to get a real one. Amen. And because the Lord reminded me something early, early this morning, woke me up. He's like, even I prayed. I thought, mm, you did, didn't you? Even I prayed. And I'm going to drop something on you. Just to, you know, here he is doing all these miracles. Jesus did a lot of miracles. The disciples watched him do a lot of miracles. But Brother Paul, the disciples come up to him and they asked him to teach him one thing. And you know what it was? Teach us how to pray. Don't teach us how to do a miracle. Teach us what to do that brings all of that with it. Get to the root, you know, the real. So um, the only thing I know to do is don't entertain anything that's not truth. As soon as you go to entertaining it, he's sly. He's got a well of information. It's false information, talking about Satan, but it's, it's polluted information. And that little bit begins to get you a little bit off course, off course, off course. And before long, what we start doing is we start uh, questioning if God really meant what he said or, or if God said it at all. Are you with me? God said, "Don't you could eat of all the trees freely, but the tree in the midst of the garden you cannot eat. And ladies and gentlemen, he said what he said. He meant what he said. Let's stay prayed up. Let's stay read up. Amen. Stay, keep your eye on the prize. And let's let God do his part. Amen. Brother Timmy, you got something? Come on, Brother John. Brother John's coming to you, brother. I got a bit to hear you. Appreciate it, it, Brother Timmy. This is only because this thing I sit right here, I, I watched it turn, and in the last few minutes, a different one that spoke and said something about stuff and talked about stuff, it all turned to having humility. Mm -hmm. So what I was thinking, uh, being a person that comes from a skill background, uh, you know, uh, I'm taught a lot of things, and, you know, we have to grow. The Bible said Jesus grows steps and all, so we have to grow in things that we learn. Sometimes it's not, I would never use the word compromise, but we had to learn new things and go into new things and learn. But here's, here's the thing. When it comes to humility, God wants everybody to have humility. That is for sure because, Brother Johnson, the word of God says that you have the option, hallelujah, you have the option from the Holy One in which you know all things, and that's the littlest baby in this place. 
But if you cut it off and you don't want to reach it, or if you have a reason why you don't want to grow up and learn it, because you don't want to learn something, you don't want to move farther in God because you know that you're going to be judged accordingly, God can't go no farther with you. He's stuck right there. You, you, you always have to remember this. God used the donkey in the Bible. He don't need no brother Timmy Pike, no brother George Pike, no Jonathan McKinney, and no Red McKinney. He don't need none of us brothers. He don't need nobody. He used the donkey. So he go around to all of us. He, he said, unless we become as one of the littlest ones in here, in no way we inherit his kingdom anyway. So humility is a thing that you learn from the inside out. Humility is a thing that Jesus had that he taught us. What you do is you surrender to the littlest, lowest person in the church. The littlest, lowest baby in the church. And when you go to church, you go to hear from the man of God because that's what God told us to do. But also, you go to pay attention if God's speaking out of the littlest baby in that church and you hear a word coming from God. Yeah. That's the way you go to church in, in the mind of worship. Yeah. There's a lot of things that can interfere with that. But at the end of the day, that's what God's taught us to do and that's what we're supposed to do. But everybody in this church don't have to be no less feeling that they think somebody's above them or somebody knows more or somebody worship different than them. Because the only thing that's different is if you're accepted yourself, God said that you have the option from the Holy One and you know all things. Not one thing, not one single thought of thing, one thing I taught in the book. You know all things. All you got to do is accept it. That's amen, amen, amen. It's, uh, it's how many was, we're going to close. How many was excited when you were small, was excited to learn how to drive? Was I the only one? Let me drive, Daddy. And after you learn how to drive, and if you were a decent driver, how many found out real quick, it's a job? Because then you had to drive everywhere for daddy. Granddaddy, too. And uncles and so on and so forth. You, you stayed up all night talking on the phone to Jody Gwynn and had to drive all day and all night somewhere. I'm like, God, I wish I'd never learned how to drive now. Ain't that right? Kids, what about, could you imagine what it's like to be an infant learning how to walk? But if you know the work attached after you know how to walk, you'd be like, nah, I want you to push me in this stroller. 38, be pushing them. You know what I'm talking about? As we get older, we mature in this one thing. We know what we see in here is going to require work. The difference in where we're at now and then is we, we know it now. Then we didn't know it. So when you got to become like a child, you got to get to the place, well, oh, so now we can walk? We got to walk. So now we can run? We got to run. So now we can drive? We got to drive. Guess what? There's work involved. But the reward is excellent. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Could we? You love the Lord? Amen. Everybody get a little something tonight. I tell you what, y'all work me hard, boy. Woo.